A tornado is one of those amazing, awesome acts of nature that simply leave you dumbfounded. It's a huge, swirling, 200 mile per hour beast of a storm that appears to have a mind of its own. You have to actually see one with your own eyes to believe it. In some places, tornadoes can happen with amazing regularity. For example, in the state of Kansas, they average about 50 tornadoes a year. That's why we see them on the news all the time. If you've ever seen a whirlpool form in a drain, then you've seen the fundamentals of a tornado at work. A drain's whirlpool is also known as a vortex, and it forms because of the downdraft that the drain creates in the body of water. The downward flow of water into the drain begins to rotate, and as the rotation speeds up, the vortex forms. Tornadoes start with a massive thundercloud. The cloud is sucking huge amounts of air up its center. In the largest clouds, called supercells, there's enough energy in that upwelling air to actually spawn a tornado. The tornado follows a path that is controlled by the path of its parent thundercloud, and it will often appear to hop. The hops occur when the vortex is disturbed. You've probably seen that it's easy to disturb a vortex in the tub, but then it will reform. The same kind of thing can happen to a tornado's vortex, causing it to form and collapse all along its path. Scientists measure tornadoes using the Fujita scale. For example, an F0 tornado has winds up to 72 miles per hour and it doesn't really do that much damage. But an F5 tornado can have winds of 300 miles per hour or more and it can do outrageous amounts of damage. For example, it can pick up a car and launch it as a projectile or it can rip a house off its foundation and send it rolling across the landscape. When tornadoes get that big, the only safe place to be is in an underground storm shelter with a very strong door. So that's how tornadoes work. I'm Marshall Brain and that's how stuff works.